Welcome to the Write Good Books podcast, the audio companion to writegoodbooks.com. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. So you can tell, I'm not the usual host, Jason Boger. This is Scott Michael Childers, and I'm recording solo today, mainly because Jason was blessed with the, the birth of his fourth child, but a little early, so we didn't have our buffer built up yet. Anyway, today we're going to talk about something that may seem a little weird to think about, but it's something that we, we tend to do anyway. Being cognizant of what, what we do might help your writing become a little bit better. I'm going to talk about perspective. Um, now, when I say perspective, I don't mean in the art way where you're trying to show depth as far as things in the foreground look bigger and things further away from the viewer look smaller and the way angles are played can t- give you a sense of where you are or to increase the tension of a, of a painted work or printed work. So using perspective in your writing can really change the way a piece feels, the way the reader reacts to it, those type of things. Now there's a couple of different types of perspective that would be in play as you write. First is going to be the perspective of the characters. One thing I've seen some people do when they just start writing out is when they're writing, say, a first-person narrative or even in dialogue, there is no sense of where that character is in their life when they talk, when they see the scene, when it's described in the thoughts of the, the character. By putting in a let's say a biased point of view in in describing a scene through the, the first person, you could show a little bit more about the character and immerse the reader a little bit more into what's going on. For example, let's say there is a scene where there's a, a table and there's something important on the table, so we will describe that, that piece. How you describe that makes a difference. So if it's first person comes in and they're, they're, you're, you're reading their thoughts. One example, I looked at the table. The wood was dark. The grain was lost in the dark stain of what was used. It wasn't aged. It wasn't shiny. It was just there. On the table sat an old revolver. I'm not sure what it was what year it was, that'd be dad's expertise, not mine. But I knew I'm going to have to take this gun and do something I didn't like. Okay, so that sets the scene in one way. Now let's take that same physical scene and read it again in a different type of view. Eh, a table wasn't anything to look at. It's just there. A piece of wood, nails. Set in the center of the room. I didn't care for it. On the top was this handgun of some sort. I detested guns. Not sure why it was there. Not sure who put it there. Maybe I should be a bit worried. Okay, so there were two pieces of narration there, right? And I tried to keep the tenor of my voice the same, but I think some acting may have spilled out. But you can see what they focused on and how they described the pieces and then their thoughts about those pieces gives you two different characters, right? You see perspective. So how you describe a setting really can change that. Now let's say you you have an omnipotent narrator, third person, right? Even that, how you describe things will change the perspective of the reader because this is their only window into the scene. So if you describe the, the majesty of the mountains or the, the fullness of the forests or anything like that, you know, you're going to see the wilderness. You're going to see, you know, the nature. However, let's say they, they really focus in on the trees, right? They're describing the evergreens and the pine needles and the, the gnarly bark and, and then the, the way things felt as a person walked through. 
right? It's a lot more intimate and it's a lot more closed type of scene. So you don't have that grand scope. Now you are right in that small piece of, of reality, right? So the perspective, are you looking at this big picture? Are you close in? And are you going from big to small or small to big? So it, are you standing in that forest describing that tree and then the thoughts and the narration or whatever pull back and it's like, oh wow, we're, we're in this small, really close type of thing, but it opens up. Or if you're doing the opposite, you start the narration with the world and you're zooming in and so you you have this feeling of it's a big world but we're really focusing in on a smaller and smaller issue so perspective it helps create the world it helps create the character it clues the reader into what's important and what's not what you choose to describe what you choose to include can really make a difference so where does perspective come into play when you're talking about dialogue. I'm going to also, t I'm going to change this. It's dialogue when you're between characters. So if you have some dialogue, remember that each character not only knows different things, they have different experiences, they have different points of view, right? So when you're talking, when they're talking to each other, you may have to explain some things. There may be some misunderstandings. There may be some some parts where someone takes something the wrong way. Um, and there you can create some conflict, both large and small. But if, if both characters in a scene know the same things and have the same live experience and the same emotional responses to things, well, that's just boring, right? So you really don't want to to spend all your time crafting this perfect little interaction between people where someone gets something immediately. Sometimes you need to have a little back and forth. And not only that, that back and forth between the characters where they're trying to, one person is trying to communicate something and the other person isn't getting it and then finally does. Well, this also helps the reader too. It, it points out to the reader what is important for each person. Here's an example. Let's say I have two, two characters here. One is, well, I'm not going to tell you who they are until the end. So here's the dialogue. TJ, we need to get this gall darn engine up and running. I understand that, sir. However, I don't have the parts. The part smarts. We need to get this going so that way we can get to our next destination. Now, come on. I'm sorry, sir. If I don't have what I need to fix it with, there's no fixing it. You don't understand, TJ. It's important we get to where we need to go. I'm sorry, but... And so on and so on. So here's the thing. Two different characters. One is not grasping what TJ is trying to say. That it is impossible to fix whatever's broken. Right? They are so wrapped up in the idea of getting somewhere that they're not hearing the message. Right? Perspective. Someone has a different goal than the other. Now, granted, you probably do this already, right? You're already writing this way. But knowing the backgrounds of these people, it's like this other person would love to help. Or maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they are be belligerent. Maybe the first time they said, I'm sorry, you can't do it. And then the more the person presses, the other is saying, this guy just doesn't get it. I, I'm done with it, right? So use these things as clues to help make a, a, a richer world more insightful uh, revelations about characters, both in, in their dialogue, which is probably easier, but the narration, right? Narrate and descriptions, uh, the narration and descriptions show a perspective, whether it's in the character's head or outside the first or, or third person. If you're doing a second person, well, perspective matters a lot because you are defining the reader at that point. And we'll get into that probably a lot later <laughs> a different show, talking about second person. So anyway, perspective really is important. We don't talk about it a lot in those terms. We talk about having a richer world, 
having more meaningful characters. And, and one of the secrets to doing that is creating that perspective. Like the artists who are painting or drawing, it's showing the angles. It's putting the stuff that's up front bigger and the stuff that doesn't really matter further in the background. So either there, if people really wanted to see it, but the sense of depth created by having the most important pieces up front and center really makes a difference. So what is your perspective on all this? Go ahead and give us a comment on the, the website, writegoodbooks.com. Jason and I, our profiles are on there. Hit us up on Twitter or Facebook. Have a good day, and hopefully uh, the next time you'll get Jason's perspective all this as well. Thanks. Have a good day.